Joe Walensky, and I'm speaking with some of the presenters that will be at our Convey UX conference in Seattle in February. Uh, I am uh, meeting this morning with Sarah Wachter Betcher. And uh, Sarah, if you're not familiar with her, is an independent content strategist and the author of Content Everywhere. Hello, Sarah, how are you? Hi, I'm doing great, Joe. Thank you for having me. Uh, where are you talking to us from? Uh, I am at my home office in Philadelphia. All right, great. Well, uh, you're going to be uh, doing uh, two presentations, uh, which is a uh, workshop format of a 90-minute, more interactive type, and then a shorter session. Uh, so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, workshop, which is getting more with content modeling. Sure, yeah. So. Um, I'm going to talk about modeling our content, and when I say modeling content, I mean how we break our content down into kind of logical pieces and parts. How do we uh, identify how our content works at a more micro level and think about the pieces that come together to make meaning? So, what are the different elements, the different um, components to content that that we need to be considering? And that's something that I think has been important for a long time. In fact, if you looked at um, you know the Polar Bear book, which has been out for gosh, I don't even know more than a dozen years now. They talk about content modeling in there, um, but it's something that's become increasingly critical as we're trying to deal with mobile and multiple devices and lots of different destinations for content, and as we're trying to do things like build personalized experiences. Um, all of that requires that we have content that's broken down into smaller pieces that can be reformatted on the fly, where maybe we need to send things out for translation and we can't retranslate all of our content all the time when we just need one little snippet changed. Um, we need to be able to you know, anticipate what kinds of content we're dealing with, what shape that content is in, and then make decisions about different layouts we might need or different personalization we might need. So all of that requires a sort of finer understanding of our content. And I think that this is something that is incredibly important um, for people in a lot of different disciplines. I am, you know, what I would I consider myself a content strategist, but I mean, everything that we do ends up kind of touching in these different areas. Um, to do this work, I think you really need to have some content knowledge and not just the kind of general um, knowledge about messaging or brand or editorial style, but you need some really specific knowledge about what it takes to create and manage content, editorial process. Um, but you also need things like information architecture skills, understanding how to structure and organize information, how things are labeled, understanding how people's mental models work, understanding user journeys and pathways, how people want information or when they might need information. Um, and then there's all this structural stuff with databases and content management systems and APIs and stuff that can get pretty technical. And so um, there's a lot to think about and I think there's many different people who have a role to play. And so what I would like to talk about is how do we start getting more out of our content by modeling it and structuring it, and how do we also learn to talk to the different people that might need to be involved in that process and actually work with, with one another to get it done. Um, so I think it's something that I'm really excited for Convey UX because I think it's, a, it's definitely an audience that uh, will come from lots of different backgrounds, and I think it's, it's really useful to hear from one another when we do that work. All right, and uh, your other uh, session is, uh, the other presentation is content and control, so uh, what can people expect to learn from that? Well, that presentation is coming out of this thing that I've realized over the last couple of years. So um, as I was working on, on my book and um, as I've been doing all of this content modeling work, I spend a lot of time um, thinking about, you know, actually how do we model content and how do we get that implemented into content management systems and um, what does that look like, how, do, how do our content systems work. And what I realized though while doing all of that is that that was only one part of the process. Um, the other huge part of that process, the control part, was that content is, is something that tends to be produced by a lot of different people in organizations. And once you start trying to change how that content works, once you start trying to say that content isn't just big blobs and big pages, but content is actually something more specific and it's got requirements and rules to it and we want to be able to reuse it and repurpose it, what you ultimately end up doing is changing people's jobs and those people need help because um, you're changing the way that they think about what it is that they're producing. And so 
you can't control all of that. You can't control all of the people. Um, it doesn't really matter how many tidy diagrams and models you make. You cannot force people to follow them. Um, so you have to really think of ways that you can bring people along with you and let go of some of that need to control. Ultimately, when I talk about content and control, what I'm talking about is the need to let go of some of our individual control and give more control to the people who are going to own and manage and maintain content for the long term. So that's what I'll be talking about in that session. All right, great. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, taking the time to uh, do this quick overview. And we will see you in Seattle in February. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And I'm very excited to be there. All right, thanks, Sarah.